Hi, I'm Philip McCord, or you know me by now, I hope. This is video number 126. I know I don't look old enough to have done 126, but this, this is number 126. Now, this is a whole new venture for me. We're going into retouching. It's going to bore all the youngsters who do, who do all the retouching at such a speed you can't follow it on the internet. This is going to be going to be for the beginners but it's a complicated beginner's one. So what I'm going to do is put on the website, uh, learnshots.com, five photographs. You can download the photographs and create the same retouches that I'm going to be doing. So that's quite a nice little twist. Now, as I say, I'm going to be taking you through it slowly. We're not going to go racing along. It's for the beginners, and it's, as I say, it's quite advanced. Excuse me. It's quite an advanced video. Now, the five pictures I'm putting up will be the original shot. This is it. The girl on a, or Gina, her name's Gina. Gina on a transparent background where all the whiteout's been done, because that's the boring bit. And also, if you don't have the software to do it, I've got another one that's available, which is this one. And that is going to be already retouched around her face, so skin retouch. Uh, I've used a program called Portrait for that, um, but you might not have it, so I've done it for you. We've also got the background. Of course, we've got to have a background, so I've added the background as a separate photograph and a little thing at the end that you might use or might not use, and this is it. Well, now we get on and I'll show you how I've done the photograph. Very simple, but I'm not going to go much into that because there are plenty of other videos that show you photographing people, etc. This is mainly about retouching. The aim is to turn a photograph into half illustration by using the technique that Vargas used and he was the guy that did all the stylish photographs of the 40s and 50s, not photographs, drawings, 40s and 50s for war planes etc. You know those lovely things you saw on American bombers uh, that were used during the war. So we're going to try and turn a photograph into half that, yeah, a, bit, a little bit but keep it a photograph. Gina, I'll introduce Gina. Say hello, Gina. Hello. <laughs> now, Gina lives in the area and she's kindly volunteered to do this. We don't have uh, a model agency in the area, but she would be perfect for, her, for, for it. What's one of the most important things about these pinups is a little bit of that. So, what we've done is we've arranged well, she's arranged to have a little bit more, but um, we'll carry on now. <laughs> As we've got a model who's not modelled before, we've got to keep up the energy. We've got to get her started, feeling confident. We'll work for a bit and everything will go wrong and she won't be any good. And uh, from then on, uh, you should get better and better. So we'll get the final shot. <laughs> As you can see here, we're not really getting anywhere. We're, we're, there's, everything's a bit stiff, really, and not lively enough. Although there is an enormous amount of energy in the room, that may be that there's too much. Now, there comes a time when you need help. And here we brought in my wife, and she's quite a good dancer, so she got to move in a bit as well. But really working a lot quicker, as you can see. And finally, we've got it. So. After a couple of hours, we've got a nice shot that we can now retouch. Right, now to start the retouch. So go on to learnshots.com, very simple. Um, that's the site. Uh, it's got a few things, it's got a gallery, etc. Now, 
the advantage with this is once you download from LearnShots, you can go into the gallery and put your result back afterwards so we can all have a look and talk about it. But anyway, once it's registered, we go to Downloads and it comes up with the download page, obviously, image downloads with tutorials. It's got a little bit about copyright that you, uh, these pictures are not your copyright. Pin up PSD files or JPEG files. Well, we're going to go with the PSD files and they will start downloading up in the top round right hand corner. It'll take about a minute to download, so we'll jump ahead. Right, now they're finished. There it is. Now I've got it on my desktop. You might find it in your download file. It depends on how you're set up. Double click on it, and we've got the, four, the five images. Well, I'm going to open, open them up in Photoshop straight away so I can have a look and check them. And I just do it by going onto the icon. And that opens them all up like a rocket. We've got our original image straight from the camera, so if you feel ambitious, you can use that one. We've got a grill that's cut out onto a, trans onto a transparent background that you'll look at later. We've got our background, did that in Miami. There we've got the retouched face. There she is, that's all retouched and on a transparent background. So that's uh, going to be useful. And lastly, you've got the same image, but without retouch face. So it rather depends on how ambitious you're going to be. Uh, these aren't enormous. Uh, these aren't enormous images. They're uh, down to about 10 megabyte apiece. But uh, that's because I don't know what power computers people have. Well, I'm going to open the file that I'm going to work on. Just going to the into the file and we pull out number three, which is the retouched version. Now, before you do anything, notice that we have two layers. Now, what do we mean by two layers? It's like having two photographs on top of each other. In fact, if I turn one off and turn one off, that one goes. So it's two photographs on top of one another, but this black square is a mask. It's called a layer mask, and I'll show you what that does straight away. I'm going to enlarge the picture and now we have a look at her eyes now I think they need looking at a little bit and I, what I've done is I've put that layer mask on and it's allowed me to be able to adjust the opacity look at her eyes now they're very very bright so I can adjust the opacity only of the eyes so I'll choose my level that I want and I would say it's about there, say 34%, and that'll stay like that. Now, I'm going to drop this down to one layer, so it's easier for us to work. And for that, I go up to the Layer menu, and I go right down the bottom, and I press Merge Visible. And that'll, that'll give us just one layer. It makes it easier to work at the moment. We'll go to more layers very soon. Now, in these pin-up shots, what happens is the girls have got very, very long legs. Now, it's a, only a few girls in the world have got legs that long in reality. So what we've got to do is make them longer. Now, how we do that, we go to the rectangular tool, rectangular tool, and I make a little su suggestion, no, selection. And now we've got to pull that selection down. Now, how do we do it? Well, we can go Command T, or we can go up to Edit, Transform, Scale, and that'll bring us up a nice little box. Now, if I tip, if I bring that box down, you see what happens. I can lengthen her leg as much as I want, and I think that's probably about it. So we double click on that and we deselect, select, deselect. And that gives us one long leg. Now what about the other leg? Now that is a bit more difficult because if we do the same thing, I'll show you what happens. We do that and Control T, Command T, we 
and we pull it out, you see what happens to the shoe. The whole thing gets very deformed. So we've got to find a way of solving that. Well, I've read an awful lot of uh, ideas on the internet for this, and unfortunately I haven't found one that works. So what I found that is probably the best is to go to Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste. That's given me two links. Very easy now to do what we want. Go to the Move tool, the top of the little cross, and we can now move that where we want. But we'll put it out of the way for the moment. And we'll go to the eraser tool, this block, and we'll just cut off. Sorry, we have to change layers because we're working on the bottom layer, on the bottom photograph. So now, because it's added a layer with the shoe, I'll show you, turn it on and off, the shoe goes away. We'll go to the bottom layer now and we will cut off, just rub out the shoe. I mean, that's very simple to do. Now we go back to the top layer and bring the shoe down to where we're going to want it. Now, how long is it got to be? This is the big decision. And from now on, we're going to be into decisions, decisions. How much are we going to lengthen it by? Well, let's go to there. So we're going to lengthen it to that. Now, of course, there's this gap in the middle. How are we going to solve that? Well, we'll enlarge the image. And yeah, effectively, I think that's going to be too long. I think that's going to be too long. Yeah, I think so. So we'll make it slightly shorter. Let's do that and that. And you see how the leg is too thin here. But that's right, we'll solve that in a second. So that's going to be our base. We go to enlarge. Now we go to the eraser. I make the eraser a bit smaller. We go to the bottom copy again because that's what we want to work on. The bottom photograph. And we just rub that off in a line. Now obviously there's things we don't like. But those will be sold later. Go back to layer one, which is to the shoe. No, we don't. We stay on the same layer. And we rub out this other piece that's here. And then we can start to see how we can make a nice shape out of those. Now, if we're certain, if we're certain that's right, what we can do is flatten the two layers again. But... Um, yeah, go on, let's do it. How do we do that? Do you remember? Layer, merge, and visible. And that gives us one layer. Now, from then on, with the clone tool and everything else, we can repair that leg. So let's go into the clone tool and we'll take a little from here and we'll just clone it a little. Can't we go too far? And we take a bit from there and we clone that. Now, that's with my clone at 100%. I'm now going to go into the clone at 25% or 28% in fact. And I'm going to take a piece from here. And this is just going to even it out a little bit. And it's doing that because it's only putting 25% in. And that's going to be good enough for what we want. And I'll show you why in a minute. But we're going to add a little bit from here to there. Now I'm taking it, uh, I presume that you know how to use the clone tool. We're going to add to a leg completely. So I go back to full, and what I'm going to do is pick up a piece here, and I'm just going to make a leg a little fatter. I'm doing that because it just looks a little wrong to me. 
Now that may be a little soft. So I go to my tool and then, ah, yes, well, we can do it like that. Or now, if, if it's right, of course, we can go to the eraser tool and just rub out the bit we don't like, which might be as, as easy to do. Uh, then we can go back and have a look what we think of her leg. I'm going to make it very small so I can clone just this piece. So you see how we can put a leg together and work out what we want. Now this, this isn't very nice, so I'll go to the eraser tool again. Right. Now the form of the leg, and this is why I say that judgment is the important thing now. It's not, not knowing how to use Photoshop, it's how to use your mind to decide what's right and what's wrong. So let's go back and have a look at this. Now, I will go back. I'm not going to waste your time with this because it's obviously it needs a bit more down here and a bit rounder there. Well, I'll do that and we'll jump ahead. Well, I've played around with the leg a bit. Now, let's just have a little closer look. Now, I do have a problem with it. And the problem I've got is that it's not sharp around the edge, but I'm not too worried about that yet. What I'm more worried about is that this leg part of the leg seems to be going up and this part of the leg seems to be going down. Now what I can do is fill in this with the clone and fill in there with the clone or, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here to the third tool down which will give me a polygon lasso tool and what I'm going to do is just draw around that part of her leg. Now all this, of course, can be changed later, up to a certain point. So I don't really have to accept anything that I'm doing at the moment. Uh, so I'm just going to do that, and then we come to there, come to there. So I'm just going to select around, around her leg and to there. Now, of course, all I've got to do is go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Now, there are shortcuts for all those, but I'm not going to go into shortcuts, or not very many anyway. We go back to the Move tool, and we can move that out the way, and as you see, we have that on a different layer. Now, I'm beginning to think this is about the time to do a save. So what I'm going to do is file, save as. Now I'm going to do it and I'm going to put a completely different name in and I'm going to call it, so Gene Exercise. And we're going to save that. Where are we going to save it? I'm going to save it on the desktop, just on the desktop. Uh, perfect, yep, that's perfect. And save. That way I can always get back to that. So we, we've got that saved. So now we can do what we like. And get back to it. So I'm going to be very, uh, very quick with it. Layer one, and get that out of the way, and go to layer two. Or sorry, layer zero now at the bottom. Pick up my eraser, and I'm just going to rub it all. Out. So then I take out that bit. But for the moment, we'll take it like that. I mean, obviously, uh, I have to do these. Whoops. Back to layer one. This is the bigger problem, the biggest problem we're working with layers. Command T for transformation. And now I can just make that the same angle. And just move it up to the same angle. Something like that will work. Double click on it to get it. And now I stay on that layer and I pick up my, my rubber and I just rub out that part of, of that leg. So you see what it does. That's, uh, that's very good. And rub out that bit. And that's it. So that's that leg more or less in place. So I think it looks fine. But what about uh, Gina? Well, she's a bit uh, sort of... Uh, I won't say tubby, it's just she's not as thin as a pin-up should be. 
And if we're really happy with that, which I am, we'll go back to uh, to one layer. So what I'll do is accept that, and we'll go to Layer, Merge Visible. What about this now? We're going to go Filter, Liquify. Now that comes up with this nice box, and this is a little menu. Well, at the moment we're going to stick with the top one, but I'm going to go a little bigger with it. Um, I'm going up to 100% so that I can see what I'm doing. Now I can make the tool bigger or smaller here. See, the round goes much bigger. So that's ideal. I'm going to start with something that size. I can also do it with two buttons, Control Alternate, or whatever alternate is on the, on the keyboard. It does change a bit, and I can just start pulling in a little bit. And you see how that will work. Now I can go as far as I want pulling it in. I'm going to go a bit bigger for this bit. I'm going to pull that in. Oh, God, if you knew what I was doing to. So we pull all this in until we make a look really, really pinupish. Now, to make a real pin of fish, I think we'll go quite a big round and we'll just, just a little bit do that. And it might be nice if we just hook a skirt up a little. Yeah, so it looks like it's blowing in the wind. I think that'll help a little bit. But now we're going into things like that. So, I'll go over her. Obviously, I'm going to do her arms a little bit. Just pull those in. You have to be very careful you don't get a bumpy line. But we can solve that because you can always just rub out that line with the eraser. So I'll get on with that and get it right. I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, here she is in all her glory. Now we'll go a bit bigger. We'll go back. Uh, make her a bit bigger so I can just show you another tool. There's another tool under this hand up here. Now if I go into there, it's called the reconstruct tool. Now you can in fact just get things back a little bit. Let's try it here and it'll just bring it back like I was before. So it just, uh, it's also useful if you've got little bumps you can just run it along with a small brush and then we'll get rid of your bumps. But um, we'll do that and we'll just go back like that. Now there she is. I've got her as I want. Uh, thin enough, fat enough in the right places, etc. So, but I've got one problem. I find the legs are a different colour and that must be because she's got some suntan on her legs for some reason. Um, that's what happens when you live in the south of France. Now, what I'm going to do is try and balance them to the same colour. Now, there are two ways. I've shown you the polygon tool, where you can draw, click, 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 all the way around. And I'm going to show you another way. We're going to the rectangle tool, and we make a, su a, selection, a suggestion. We make a selection like that. Now, we can change the colour of all that, but, of course, the dress is going to go as well. So I'm going to go across, and I'm going to go to this tool, which is like the European flag, and it all goes red. Now, if I enlarge that, so I can make this red, the dress red, simply by going into the eraser tool and doing that. Now, what I've done there is I'm adding white, so I have to change here the color. Now, if I change the color, you see what happens? So all I've got to do here, and I'll do it roughly, all I have to do here is go around the edge like that. So it does the same thing as the, uh, as the, the polygon, polygon tool, but it's just another way of doing it. Sometimes this can be easier on certain things, but the object of this lesson is to get you using the more, most tools you can. So I'll go a bit bigger and we just fill in the rest. Bit. and I'll just fill all that in like that. Now as I say it's a bit rough but it won't 
really matter on the final on the final thing. Now we go out, we press that again, and we've now got our selection of what we want to make roughly the same colour as the rest of it. So how do we do that? Well simple, we go into image adjustments, we slide it across and we go down to colour balance. Now what colour is it? Well I would say it's a bit yellow. So if we increase the blue a little, just a little, it's got that pinky look to it now. Now I say OK to that and and then I go into image adjustments, brightness and contrast, and I lighten that. Now that's beginning, in fact I think it's very close, to the colour of her arms. I might just drop it a fraction. Let me say OK and we select deselect. Now obviously there are shortcuts for all these things but I'm not going to get you involved in those yet. Now that looks reasonable. Yeah, the same colour. Now we're going on to the creative part, creative part. We're going to drop this layer, layer 1, into this little box. And that will create a duplicate layer. And we do it again. So we've got two duplicate layers. The top layer we're going to change. And we're going to go Image, Adjustments, Hue, Saturation. And we're going to drop the saturation right down to black and white. Then we're going to go to Filter, Filter Gallery. Now Filter Gallery on some computers or some of the older programs will say and we're going to go into Filter, Filter Gallery. Now that might be artistic filters on your program, depending what date it is. So we Filter Gallery. And that will bring up all the drawing effects, etc. Now I want, no oh, it's already on it, I want Cutout. Now this Cutout, you see it adds a little bit of contrast here and there. Now different adjustments will give totally different results. I'm going to leave it like that and we'll have a look. You see what it's done? That's without it, and that's with it. But we want to blend them together. So we go into blend mode, and that's under normal. And we use the blend mode overlay. Now that what that's given us is almost a drawing. Now we're going to filter that. And we're going to go into blur, Gaussian blur. And we increase the blur on that until it gets the result that we like. Now, that's not far off, is it really? So I say OK. Let's go up close and we'll look at her face. So what I'm going to do is now turn it more into a drawing. I'm going to go to the Brighton tool, right over here, Dodge tool, and I'm going to start with the hair. Now with the hair, I'm going to go across the flow of the hair and I'm going to lighten that so it makes a nice highlight across, quite bright. And I'll do the same thing here. In the opposite direction where the hair is going, it looks like it's quite shiny hair. And a lot of girls look like hair like that. Now we're going to use the same tool and I'm going to just increase the highlights. Now I'm going to increase the highlights where I want them. Right there. Don't think we need to increase that, but what we could do is increase this. Now th what this does, of course it increases the roundness. It gives us more a rounder look. And we do that. Just increase them a little bit. So I've got emails coming in. But, um, I should have turned those off. But anyway. So we come down to the legs, they're not quite the same colour, but nothing to stop us going back. And we increase the highlights on our legs. And we do that. Where should we put the highlights down here? Around there? Here we go, look at them here. It doesn't really have to be logical with the lighting because it's to be a drawing, because artists don't not terribly logical sometimes. 
So that's now given us more of a drawing look. So we can go into the burn tool and we'll put it at quite low, 7%. And we'll just add a fraction there and then all the way down. Do the same everywhere you want a little bit more contrast. There's one highlight I forgot to put in. We'll move in, always like this one. We'll go back to the dodge tool, small tool, and we'll just put a little bit more roundness just to highlight the important parts of the pinup. Now she's beginning really to look like a drawing. We'll put some shadows on her legs, a little bit darker. Just down that side. So I say I work slowly on this, bit by bit. I would spend quite a long time on this normally. Now I'm going to up the power to about 18%. Uh, put it at 20%, 25%, and I want to get something into the dress. So we'll go on mid tones, we'll stay on mid tones, and we'll just put a little bit of dark in the dress, just a little bit. So we get some movement in there, and I'll just do that, and I'll just come across so it will pick out the pleats more in the dress. Well, there she is. What you can do, and this really, I mean, it can go on for hours and hours. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but I'll just show you how. What you can do is go in here and we go to highlights and we can pick out all the highlights so it begins to look more, increase it's got even more, so it begins to look more like a drawing. I think by increasing that, you can make it look much, much more like an illustration. But that all this depends on how far you want to go, and it all takes time. There's nothing to stop you doing it in the dress as well. I'm not going to do it because it takes too long, but I could have highlights coming down in all these and make it really look uh, worthwhile. That's beginning to be the, the look that I want. So that's what we've done to it. Now it's quite dramatic, but it's quite nice. It's still a photograph. Now by enhancing that you can make it more and more of a drawing. Well I think now we can put on our background. Let's have a look. Uh, we open up the PSD files, we go into uh, background and uh, this one. So that's our two backgrounds. And we slide those down into Photoshop and there they open up. The way to get them now onto the other picture is um, arrange and we go to three up vertical and then simply, we've got all three images there, simply we go to the move tool and we click on that one and we bring it across. Now you'll get this this up on your screen, which is uh, basically that it's not the main colour space, just press OK and it will slide in. So what we can do is get rid of that image. We've got this one now with both layers on. What happens if you bring this one in exactly the same way? We do that and again up comes the message and it's there, which is just this grill double. So those are our images. We'll close down that one just to get this one on. And we've got now uh, the girl layer, the grill layer. And this is where it gets fun with all these layers. So what we want to work on is just the girl. So we'll turn those round. We'll get rid of that one for the moment, layer two. We'll, we'll turn it off, which is the grill. We want the girl on top. So we're going to put the background, we just slide it down and put it under. And here we have her. So we go to the move tool and we can move her around, we can move the background around, sorry. So we get it in the middle. 
if we go turn off the bottom layer of the girl, of Gina, and it just leaves us with those two. Now I'm going to turn off the background layer and we're going to merge visible. This will get rid of that black um, of the uh, this will get rid of the black and white layer. So we sorry. So we go onto one of them and we right click. And it says merge visible. We've done that before, so we'll do that. Now we've got just the three images with this one off. We turn on the background layer again. Now this might sound complicated, but it's not really. And we've got a decision to make now. Where do we put Gina in this picture? Well, we've got her a light there, so we can move her around as we like with the move tool. And we can bring her down here. But of course, what that means is she's floating in midair. We could bring her over, and she's still floating in midair. So we've got a decision to make. Now what I would do, and I'm leaving this for you, I would add a piece on the bottom that would be a floor. And I would bring the floor in so I could put her up here, and she would be standing on a floor. Just an idea for you. But anyway, I'm going to put it like that for now without the floor. So she'll be a bit floating in the middle of the air, in the air. What about my grill? Should the grill, should her leg be behind the grill or in front of the grill? Well, let's have a look. We'll turn the grill on. We'll go, so it's active, so it's blue, and we can bring it down. So it will be in front of her. Now there's of course slight difference in size we can see. So with what you've learned, how can we get rid of that difference in size? Command T and we can change its size. We can change its form, change its size. We can also rotate it a little bit just in case. And with the arrows on the keyboard we can move it so it's dead right. But I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Just want the time to get that dead right, but I don't want to spend the time doing it. So We'll double click in there and we've now got the grill in front of her. But what it does enable us to do if we want to, by making Gina the active layer, we can put a right behind it. Which does solve the problem of the floor or makes it a lot easier solving the problem of the floor. So I'm going to leave it there and just see what you do. And you can upload it onto LearnShots.com. It'll look very different to mine, I hope. And I hope it looks better. Oh, one thing we can do, I'll tell you what. We could put filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we can make the background a little softer. So there's an awful lot that can be done. And don't forget to upload your image to LearnShots.com. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Bye.